Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungson, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue to celebrate with great joy the victory of the resurrection of Jesus. And we partake of this Eucharist so that we may receive the new life offered to us by our risen Lord. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us call to mind our many sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. 
Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John, and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with this man? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it but so that it may not spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live 
and declare the works of the Lord. Though the Lord has indeed chastised me, yet he has not delivered me to death. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, they say that trust is earned. It means that if you want to be trusted, you must make yourself trustworthy. Kung gusto mong pagkatiwalaan ka, patunayan mo na katiwatiwala ka, na pwede kang pagkatiwalaan. Trust is earned. But looking at our gospel today, this does not seem to be the case. Despite the testimony of Mary Magdalene, to whom Jesus first appeared, the eleven did not believe her. And despite the testimony of two other disciples 
who met Jesus as they were walking along. The eleven did not believe. And so Jesus finally appeared to the eleven and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. At dapat lang naman talaga dahil hirap na hirap maniwala yung mga alagad ni Jesus. Dapat lamang napagsabihan sila ni Jesus. But after reprimanding them, what Jesus said next is quite unexpected. Jesus said, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Pagkatapos niyang pagsabihan sila dahil sa kanilang kakulangan sa pananampalataya, dahil hindi agad sila naniwala sa muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus, isinugo niya sila para ipahayag ang mabuting balita sa buong mundo. I want to ask Jesus, Really, Jesus? These people who could not even believe that you rose from the dead, you are sending them to convince people to believe in you? Sila nga hindi maniwala eh. Sila pa ang ipagpapahayag para maniwala ang mga tao sa iyo. How could you trust these people? These people do not even deserve your trust. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, this is how Jesus trusts us. He does not even wait for us to be trustworthy in order to trust us. He simply trusts. And look at what happened to his trust to his apostles. We see in our first reading today how courageous and fearless Peter and John have become. That they could say directly and with all boldness to the leaders, to the scribes, and to the elders, it is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and what we have heard. It is better for us to obey God than to obey men. Ang lakas ng loob, wala ng takot. Hindi, mo, hindi nyo kami mapipigilan na ipahayag ang salita ng Diyos at masusundin namin ang Diyos kaysa sa inyo. That boldness, that courage, that fearlessness, all because Jesus trusts them. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, for Jesus, trust is never earned because there is nothing we could really do that could earn the trust of God. For Jesus, trust is grace. Trust is freely given. He trusts us even if we are not, un not worthy of His trust. He trusts us because He loves us. For how could He love us if He would not trust us? Pinagkakatiwalaan tayo ni Jesus, hindi dahil karapat-dapat tayo ng Kanyang tiwala. Dahil kahit anong pagsisikap natin, hindi tayo magiging karapat-dapat sa tiwala ni Jesus. Bakit niya tayo pinagkakatiwalaan? Dahil mahal niya tayo. At hindi niya tayo pwedeng mahalin kung hindi niya tayo muna pagkakatiwalaan. Dahil ang pagtitiwala 
ang sandigan ng pagmamahal. How could you love someone without trusting that person? You could only love if you trust. And as recipients of that trust, then we must at least strive to show Jesus that we could somehow be trusted. Iba kasi yung pakiramdam kapag pinagkatiwalaan ka. Kahit alam mong hindi ka naman pwedeng pagkatiwalaan. Yan ang nangyari kay Pedro at kay Juan. Kapag hindi ka pinagkakatiwalaan, hindi ba ang hirap-hirap kumilos? Ang hirap-hirap gumalaw? Kahit na maganda naman ang iyong hangarin, pagdududahan ka kasi hindi ka pinagkakatiwalaan. Pero kapag pinagkatiwalaan ka, parang gusto mong ipakita na kahit papaano naman, hindi sayang ang tiwalang ipinakita mo sa akin. My dear brothers and sisters, God trusts us. Not because we are worthy, but because God is love. Today is the seventh day in the octave of Easter. And for the past days, we have seen the many different fruits of the resurrection of Jesus. Fruits like hope, faith, Joy, new life. Today, let us add trust. Trust as one of the fruits of the resurrection. And every time we trust each other, we experience the resurrection. Tomorrow, the second Sunday of Easter, the octave of Easter is also the feast of the Divine Mercy. And one popular prayer connected to the devotion to the Divine Mercy is, Jesus, I trust in you. As we say that, as we say, Jesus, I trust in you, let us listen to Jesus telling us, I trust you too. May we never break that trust. We pray now to God our Father in the spirit of His risen Son, so that He may touch our lives, heal our doubts, and restore our faith. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may be filled with the spirit of the risen Lord as she proclaims Him to the whole world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may commit ourselves to Christ as proof of our love for Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may not grow bitter toward those who oppose us, but rather pray for their conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted in their suffering with their faith in the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may experience the saving power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions 
We also remember the people we promised to pray for and the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, give us the courage to witness to the coming of your kingdom. Grant that we may always do your will and so merit your many blessings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find the light in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, He has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Broderick our Administrator, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross? Alleluia. Suffer to of praise, then let us sing, Alleluia, unto Christ our heavenly King, Alleluia, who endured the cross and grave, Sinners to redeem and save. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessings now and forever. Amen. 
May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance forever and ever. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Regina Cheni, Laetare, Alleluia. Qui aque meruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicutixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.